thing called the hot take of the week. The hot take of the week. And it comes from, and I'm going to paraphrase. I'm not going to directly quote because I'm going to get something wrong if I do. But it came from Carmen Vitale from Fox Sports. She's a member of, she's a co-host on uh, Adam Rank's show. Whoa, the Sick now. Podcast. Oh, yeah. Adam Rank and the Sick, Sick Podcast. They asked her, what did you think the uh, Bears would do this season? Whether or not, she said, no, the Bears will not compete for the NFC title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. North the title. North? Okay. NFC North title. Versus what I saw Ryan Poles say in a quote. He said he, said he expected the team to compete for the NFC North title. So who do you guys want to listen to? The guy that's in house hall watching these guys work out and get together and become a team and a network and become brothers. Or you want to listen to a reporter who want to, I, I ain't going to be smirched, Carmen, because I like her takes a lot of times, but it's just, uh, um, I just don't like when I see uh, reporters feel like they have to antagonize the base based on, I, I sometimes I feel like it's the network they work on and they feel like they have to have hot takes. Interactions. Yeah, and, he, and then you're trying to build your cachet. And sometimes you do that through negativity. You bring negativity towards you. you build your okay. It brings a lot of talk. Yeah, and, and that's the kind of shit that really pisses me off. And so well, you know, come on. a lot of people responded. So y'all go ahead, man, my bad. Uh, go, PJ, you kick us off, man. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I think uh, as we talked about on you know BCB the other night, I think we have to realize that Paul's job is to instill confidence in his guys. So he spent the last year, you know, doing something this offseason, doing something. He better tell his guys, oh, we're trying to compete for a championship this year, even if it's not there. He got to say that because as a football player, if you don't tell me that the expectation is for us to win, why am I here? I'm not here just to sit up there and, uh, you know, just just to be here. I'm I'm trying to win every game. Uh, I think Carmen gave what she might say is a realistic approach. But as we talked about here, uh, the talent that has that Poles has brought in is far greater than the talent we had last year. So I I lean more towards Poles and saying that, yeah, Poles is right. I think we can compete for a playoff spot this year and definitely mm-hmm. we can compete for uh, – the divisional champion, I mean, the yeah, division champs, because I don't view Detroit, Green Bay, nor Minnesota as some a team that we can't beat. I think we can beat them. So I, I, I agree with Poles. Well, just, well, yeah. just for the record, man, I just want to say, Carmen, if you're watching this show, I'm not trying to poo poo and piss on you. <laughs> I'm just disagreeing with what you're saying, and I'm not trying to kind of derail what you're saying. I just believe that this guy is genuinely um, excited about what he has in that in that building and versus what you believe. And so I'll just say that. You say this. I like Carmen too, man. She's uh, she's new to the NFC North, man. She came from uh, Tampa Bay. She used to cover Tampa Bay down there. Now she's covering the entire NFC North. So I'm going to just... from Minnesota. No, no, that's... Uh, the other girl, the other young lady, uh, from okay, ESPN, Courtney, Courtney Cronin. Okay. Courtney, Courtney Cronin, yeah, my Courtney fault. Cronin. Yeah, yeah Carmen came from Tampa Bay, and now she's covering the entire NFC North. So, what do I mean? think maybe she likes more of what she's hearing from the other cities. You know, she's covering the entire division. You know, so that's just her take. You know, she covers the entire division. So, and Sam, just did you see what King Booker World just said? What did he say? She also said that they're gonna lose the opening game against Green Bay. Heck no, not All right, so, so retract. Now Carmen, you tripping. You tripping, <laughs> you tripping Carmen. <laughs> now see, I'm saying you tell her saying I like you, Carmen. You're gonna talk that trash. Yeah, so. I had to put it out there, man. Heck like no. Every, Carmen. everybody's no. really on Detroit's uh bandwagon, I think. Yep. That's but uh I think Detroit's just going to Detroit. <laughs> I I really say, that's they're just that's going my Detroit. saying. That's my saying too, Chris. Detroit will find a way to Detroit. You know, Green Bay doesn't know what they have in uh, Jordan Love right now. You know, he uh, 
he's been there. He's been a backup though, you know. And I, I I expect them to run to rely heavily on that running game until you know he gets his bearings under him. And the Vikings are selling everything off. I think they're about to get rid of Cooks next. They're running back, starting running back. So they're gonna have a rookie in and Addison. I like that wide receiver. But yeah. other than that, I don't see what, what they've done to get better. They're they're selling off on the, selling the defense off right now. Did they get rid of uh, Griffin? Uh, which Griffin? Uh, the uh, no. defensive end. No, but he's still there. Oh, he okay. still he, he wants mm-hmm. to be paid or something, right? Okay. Is that the guy that wants yeah. to be paid? So he yeah. won't. He's probably That's, not. Uh, Daniel Hunter there. wants to be paid too. Hunter, yep. Hunter. That's, That's what, what I was thinking. thinking about. My bad. That's what I was thinking. Yep, Daniel Hunter. So I don't know how long he's going to be on the team. You know, they're in a sort of a cap situation. They, this is a, that's a team that should have did what we did last year and retooled, and they're trying to, you know, get that done now. I think the Bears are in position to compete. I'm with polls on this. You know, you don't say that unless you talk to your coaching staff and go tell them, like, hey, what do y'all see? And everybody's excited. That just speaks to the excitement in the building. Everybody feel that way. He's not going to say that and then, you know, put that pressure on his coaching staff. You know, because they they're the ones who have to take that hit if it doesn't happen. You yeah. know, so he's all, they're having these conversations <clears throat> already in the building. That's what that tells me. When Paul said that, I'm like, they're having these conversations, <laughs> and the coaching staff is saying, "Hey, we can compete. Yeah, we can win this year." And that's what I expect them to do. And real quick, man, J2K just mentioned this, and I, in all due respect to J2K, I'll, I'll respond to this this way. He says, "Not to disagree, but that first game is a gamble." Green Bay has a good defense in a, in a running game. He has a good defense in a running game. And some of the teams, some teams are often not ready for the start of the season. Lots of wild games. Everything he just said is true. Everything he just said is true. I will offer this as a uh, a rebuttal. They don't have the intangible of Aaron Rodgers this time. And so if you watch that game, if you watch that game, yes, the defense – I mean, the defense was porous up the middle against that run game. So I get I get the uh, hesitancy to jump on the Bears bandwagon. They were terrible. They, those running backs tore us up. But the, in the end, they corralled that shit. And in the end, it was Aaron It was Aaron Rodgers, like it always is. And without that intangible, without that intangible I think they're going to um, come up short for sure. Can I say one thing real quick, guys, yeah. regarding that first game? That first game, I think it – I think it depends on how much our starters play in the preseason. I think if he sits our starters and don't get that chemistry, we might lose that one there. But if he gets them ready in that preseason by giving them some playing time, because when we met uh, Green Bay a few years ago, uh, when Nagy first got here, he didn't play our starters. And that was a game we should have won, but we didn't because our starters, I mean, they wasn't used to playing yet. So I think, that's going to be the key. If we get start <clears throat> extra playing in the summer, they'll be ready for that first game. I think that was one of the biggest differences is, differences in last year's team is we weren't a slow starting team in any game. We were all, and I think that speaks to the hits principle. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that's what it's all. About. I think that's why that hits principle was in place so that you know you're always playing with that high intensity. Your motor is all from start to finish. I think right. that was important. I think, yeah, PJ, I agree with you. You know, uh, we in the past when we had Nagy as our head coach, yeah, we were starting games slow. We probably didn't start the game till mid second quarter, but every game last year we competed and we started out <laughs> hot, and that's what I expect this year. You know, I think other teams have that problem. You know, with the end of training camp, legs are dead and all this, all that. But our team emphasizes on emphasizes. You know playing with that high intensity from start to finish. And I think that's why it's so important. And I think it helps us to, you know, get out in front of some people early on in those games. Right. Gentlemen, let me say this. If we allow Green Bay to beat us in the home opener, in the first game that Aaron Rodgers is gone after him telling us he owns us. I agree. I dang near feel like the season is lost. Mm -hmm. There's no way they should lose that game. They should be so hyped up for that game. They should they should shut Green Bay out. I'm I'm gonna say that. They should not lose that game. If they lose that game, I'm gonna be I'm y'all gonna have to call me and talk me off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> to J2K's point, to J2K's point about uh 
I think he was talking about getting off to a, a slow start. There's a there's some reference to that in context, especially when you got a bunch of new pieces. And we're gonna talk about chemistry really fast. When you got when you especially when you got new pieces on offense, and and most teams most teams will gel in the preseason and in training camp, but sometimes they don't completely gel in training camp and in the preseason. And it takes them a few games to really get that to get that flow going. And, and my bad, Triple. Hold on, I got you. And but he's got a point there. You know, there's a, there's a certain something that has to happen, and, and you can't really see it. You just feel it. And it's a jail, man. And and that I hope they don't run into that problem, but it wouldn't surprise me. But I know they're gonna beat Green Bay the first game. Fuck that. So go ahead, Triple R. I see. First of all, y'all gonna get up off my girl Carmi V. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put that out there. You just like Second it. of all, just because a statement is made, don't make it that. It has to be a true or false. Everyone here just stated for the Chris. Therapy's a thing, brother. <laughs> and and just a, exactly. Santa well, Claus at your house. <laughs> so so just because he came the, early, baby. <laughs> Just because the emotion and the and the anger should be there from, you know, several decades of the Green Bay Packers serving the Chicago Bears on the gridiron does not mean that this team knows anything what the fuck that is about. So as a fan, I'm with you. It's like, oh, these uh, Packer motherfuckers, let's kick their ass. Whereas like this team is like, hey, I'm. I'm playing football now. How we doing? Oh, we're the Bears. Okay, let's play Packers. Let's go, y'all. You know, so I get that from a from a fan standpoint, but realistically, Carmi's right. The defense on Green Bay is much more established, and they can counteract what our still coming together, you know, offense is going to do. Our defense is still very young, as opposed to very young quarterback, but they still have a running game. So theoretically, you know, those can counteract each other and just being the more established team, even though they have a unestablished quarterback, the Packers should have the edge. The Vikings are coming off of a playoff run. They are making changes, but they still got Kirk Cousins. They still got Justin Jefferson. You know, we are upgrading our secondary but they're still got to have time to learn, to come together, to be able to gel, as opposed to saying, oh, shit, I thought you was going to go left. And I was, OK, next time, you know, you know, and then you look at the Detroit Lions. I mean, they are a very good, talented team for fuck's sake. They've been picking number one for the last 20 years. <laughs> I mean, should they not have some goddamn talent on that roster? Preach. I got a very preach. <laughs> so with that said, you know, they have number one draft picks up and down every position group. And so, yes, they should be ahead of where we are because our last number one pick before Justin Fields was, you know, Mitch and, and we've been trading away picks for years. So the talent pool is deeper in Detroit. And that's not a homer thing. It's just like, well, fuck, look up and down their roster. It's like, hmm. They guys, oh shit, he's nice. Two, and then two. so I mean, yeah, they're an up and coming team. You know, we don't want to admit it because it's like, you know, fuck Detroit. And you know, yeah, fuck Detroit. But you know, they got a good team coming up. And it's not a, a detrimental to our fan base or to yourselves to admit that. What Carmi is saying realistically, the Vikings are more established team, should be battling for the division. Detroit is a Young team, but they've had a year or two or now together ahead of where this Bears team is. So they should be ahead of where the Bears are. The Green Bay Packers, yes, they got a new quarterback, but theoretically they're still an overall better team than this young developing Bears team. So from her standpoint, she's not hating. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, y'all get off her ass. She's just calling uh, like it is. She's it. not you know, getting paid by any of these teams to make these calls. She's just giving her opinion, not, much like we all are. 
Triple and R. As far as polls, the polls aspect, hell yeah, fucking right he's supposed to say that bullshit. And it's not bullshit. Let me rephrase that. Hell yeah, fucking right he's supposed to say that shit. Because that's mm-hmm. the shit we want to hear. When, when uh, what's your what's your man's name, PJ? Our, our new president of our uh, president? Warren. Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren. He is the first GM I can remember hearing audibly say, we want to win Super Bowls. We that's our goal. That Super Bowls plural, not get there and just piss it off. Mm-hmm. And Bowles has consistently mm-hmm. said we want to win the North and not give it back. This team better compete because now we got our young dogs and we got to make them hungry. All right, yes, you know, mm-hmm. I would hope that we get to the playoffs, but realistically, we still have puppies that are young, hungry dogs. Whereas yeah, mm-hmm. those more established teams have dogs. You know that have been trained you know so we we're getting there but don't rush the process and paul mm-hmm. has to instill mm-hmm. that mentality so yes we want to fight flus and all the staff are going to make these dudes fight all these guys are hungry and will fight but it just takes that experience and that time to gel and they're the teams in our division are just ahead of us right now in those aspects to, to I his point, totally he disagree. Made, hold on, hold on. Big I, 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 my point was hold just on, with Green Bay. I got to make. Uh, I got to take the privilege. Hold on, because he made some really good points, and I got a really profound uh, answer to that man. Response to it, because he made some really good points, and that is, <laughs> fuck all that. We whooping all that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him again. Poo <laughs> poo. All that. Yeah. It sounded <laughs> good. It was very profound. It was very ass. profound. Ass. Fuck all that. But go ahead, yeah. Chris. My bad. Well, I was just going to say, you know, the initial point was the week one. And Green Bay did not just have a – they don't just have a new quarterback. They just lost the first ballot Hall of Famer, probably top five of all time. That's going to have an immense effect on their team. And I can't say that after every off season that we've had, I don't I don't know that they are man for man more talented than we are. So I think the NFC North is 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 very even, and I think we probably have the best quarterback in the division. So uh, not agree, agree. So I mean, and and that in itself makes it uh, the Wild West for me. I think uh, I think fair uh, enough. I think the thing that's being misunderstood or taken for granted is that Eberflus, to me, is a better coach than anyone in the division except maybe the guy from Green Bay. Uh, Dan Campbell, he's a great rah-rah guy, but I don't think he can out-coach Flus. And as far as Mm -hmm. Green Bay goes, I don't know how they're going to respond to adversity without having the king of R.E. LAX. I, so I don't, I mean, I, without him being there, I don't know how they're going to respond. And like Samo said, Minnesota, uh, we don't know what they are. With them trying to be a, go, you know, do a fire sale, I don't exactly know what they're going to bring. So to say that it's impossible for us or we're not going to win the division, I can't say that. I really can't. You know what? Like you said, as far as talent-wise, I think we've caught up, and we caught up in once two seasons. We caught up with the division talent-wise. I think I, we just went through that depth chart. Where do we see that we have a problem at any every position? We're fine except for one position we could talk about. We could sit here and cry about, and that's defensive end. That's the only position we're gonna sit here and just talk about right now. No, no, no. What, what, what about uh, center? Center. What was your position with center? center the cream will rise to the top at center. That's my position. Okay. Okay. That's how I feel about center. You know, there's competition at center. There's good mm-hmm. competition. So Absolutely. the cream will rise to the top. That's what I'm okay. expecting to happen at center. And as far as the offensive line as a whole, you know, everyone else around that center is going to be good. You know, the two guards on to the left of him and to the right of him are going to be good guards. So I think we'll be fine at center, you know, as long as we're not, as long as it's not Lucas Patrick. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing <laughs> that we don't talk about that we just, you know, take for granted is the fact that there were seven one score games last year. 
We were a terrible team last year. Seven one score games. And in at least four of those games, there were mental mistakes that lost us the opportunity to try to win those games. Players dropping passes, players getting uh the guy from the Vikings, the ex Vikings player got the ball punched out. He should have just ran out of bounds anyway. You know, Smith Marset or whatever. Smith Marset, two muff punts by Valus Jones, you know, you know, all mental mistakes that are going to be corrected this year. I think some of those other teams have a little bit more continuity, but that's not on us to make the continuity that we'll have this year as well. This is our second year in the system, in this system. Yep. Yes, we have a few rookies. We don't even have a lot of rookies that have to start for us this year. You know, we got a lot of guys that can come in from last year that can start on the defensive line. You know, those rookies are coming in in the rotation. You know, it is defensive line. We have a very simple uh a simple game plan when it comes to defensive line in this defense. So I expect us to compete this year. I think we have the opportunity to win the North. I'm not afraid of fucking Green Bay. Fuck them. I'm not afraid of who is it? The Vikings? Fuck them. I don't, we don't even know what they are. And the, Detroit's going to fucking Detroit. You know, Detroit will fucking Detroit. This guy's in Detroit. We're going to lay his ass out too. I love you, Monty, but you're going to get hit. You getting hit when we come through that hole, all right? This is our division. This is our year, guys. I think we have the opportunity to do something big. I, like PJ said, we have the best coaching, and the better coaching of all the coaches. And I just think that, you know, we have an opportunity to win this division right now. Before you go, Nick, I know you're ready. I think what – I think the overall – what – what uh Samo just said, and I agree with this overall. When I get done studying the ro- roster and breaking it down, studying every guy on there, I think um, we're more at a surplus than we, we're more we're more at a surplus than we are at need. And we haven't been there in a, quite a while, man. We we, we got uh-huh. we got multiple guys. You know what I mean? We do have a spot at defensive end that needs to be addressed. And I'm going to get to your question, Bear Truth Nine, about who 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 you think. We ought to go after, but you know, but go ahead, Nick. You know what? Let me just save that right now. Go ahead, Nick. The North is extremely wide open. You guys all make valid points. I really can't think of anything much else to say, but to, and this isn't me doing it just to say it, but we we might have to worry about Jordan Love. Okay, now going into twenty twenty, that <laughs> draft. I was looking into quarterbacks because we didn't have one at the time still. We still had Bum Mitch, and a friend of mine put me onto this kid from Utah. You know, and I started watching his videos. I seen he would throw a lot of interceptions, though, on, like, easy throws, 10-yard outs, would throw easy picks, like, come on, what are you doing? But at the same time, threw a beautiful deep ball, had some touch there, and so he was a guy that was a project quarterback. So I knew – if there's any team that he was going to go to where he had any chance, it would be the Packers. Sure enough, he gets drafted to the fucking Packers. <laughs> and watching him in preseason and in the times he's went in, sure, he may not look like Aaron Rodgers, but at the same time, just look at how his footwork has changed from the first time he's played to the re- most recent time he's played. Night and day, he's looking more and more like Aaron Rodgers. And I'm not here saying he's going to be Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying that. Nick. But watch out. He might be good. Not great, but he hey, might be good. Hey, Nick, I told you Nick the most. Not practical. Aaron Rodgers, though. He's the most though. practical. Yeah, 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 no, listen, I saw the clip. I saw the clip. I saw a clip of him, bro, throwing a little throw to the left, in, like a red zone play. Look, just like number 12. From the footwork to the throw, it scared the shit out of me. Was there any pressure up the middle, Nick? Was there yeah. any pressure coming he was from rolling him? out. He was I rolling out. Right. Yeah, that's I ain't mad at it. Nick. It scared I me. Me. I know you're ready. I know you're ready. People. I have anxiety, I bro. So I worry about these things. He has some. He has some <laughs> tape. He has some tape out there that is progressive, as compared exactly. to how he started off. You see. You see. Yeah, the you growth. can see the progression, man. So, yeah. Well, I, I guess the only question I have regarding Jordan Love is, how does he handle adversity? I mean, the talent might be there, but see, that's why I'm saying with that lack of experience and if we punch him in the mouth in that first game, I don't see him having that 
that that resolve like Aaron you know, Rodgers does. Yeah, to does he have that moxie? Hold. We don't. We don't know. Yeah. That's right. A good ass, right. PJ. That's a great point. That's yeah, a good ass. We haven't seen that yet, man. So, oh, and point of clarification, real quick before we transition. Um, I ain't scared, and I don't want this team to be scared of none of these motherfucking teams. Hell no. You know, we're going to hit these motherfuckers in the mouth. Yeah. But I'm just saying, team-wise, I just think they're, you know, go ahead. You just got two. You just got you got a yin and a yang, man. You got a yin and a yang, and you scared of one side or the, the other. The other side, like, he was like, hold on, though. He just used to, you know, the past. The past is the past, fellas. Yeah, man. That's where we're going to leave that shit. We're going to leave that shit to tell people, past. man, whatever happened in the past don't have shit to do with today. Mm-hmm. You guys sounding like Lion King and whatnot. They they have to, <laughs> based on what I have seen, they have wiped all that clean, man. They are they going to exercise those demons this year? And that deep, I'm telling you that that surplus they have on offense and defense right now, with the weaponry on offense and the surplus they have on defense, man, it's gonna it's gonna come a point when they two, three and zero, oh, when when everybody gonna come back to this conversation like, man, you know what? I underestimated these guys. Remember what they just did to teams and competed with teams with garbage. Exactly. I, you know, just remember that and how exactly. even who's had these guys ready to compete with garbage. Every game. Mm-hmm. Not garbage, garbage. Every game. And we and gonna so make know that. And so just know that while you're judging and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to, you know, reel in your, your takes and you're trying to be conservative about how you think the team will do, man, don't be a chump. Step on out there in faith and believe in your fucking team like I do. Yes, sir. Step in front of that train. Step Sweet. in front of it. Step in front of it. <laughs> I believe in them like I believe in Jesus, man, because I see what they're doing, man. I do. Until Jordan Love showed me that he can play quarterback, I don't know what he is. That's how I feel about it. He's going to have to play quarterback. We're going to shut the run down, and Jordan Love going to have to beat us because you know what? We're going to play with a lead. We're going to kick it off. We're going to play with a lead. We're going to start off hot. Second half, I expect us to be up 10 points. That's well, we true. have to. That'd be nice. If we we're up 10, to it, then they have to, he has to play quarterback. Do you believe in Justin?